Hey everybody, how's it going? We're still fighting with the 288 farmer tax. Oh, Iron Man, thanks again, buddy. <laughs> you didn't have to do that, but you did. Thank you. Moving on, friends. The battle of the 288s. Uh, I'm still fighting with Caleb's ported 288. If you guys remember, this 288, I built it on the channel. It's a farmer tech kit. Check out the playlist if you're interested in the building of this saw. This saw is bone stock, exactly how it was delivered. And it's a good runner, but I did have some issues, uh, teething issues with this saw, mainly oiling issues. Now, this isn't the glamorous part of building power saws, especially vintage saws or saws that are going to be pulling a long bar. But let's face it, if your saw doesn't oil, what good is it? Um, a saw that doesn't oil, you smoke your bar, your, your chains go dull quickly. But more importantly, that makes a lot of heat. And heat kills saws. Um, often, I get a saw in here with a blued bar and the, the owner puts a brand new chain on it. That's a standard maneuver. You put a brand new chain on so the saw mechanic won't know. <laughs> Friends, I know. <laughs> you, put a, you put a sharp chain on it. If you see a bar that's blue, often the clutch springs get blued and then they get weak and you got a rattly clutch and... But the worst part is all that heat goes to the crank, it leans the saw out, and eventually you pop bearings. That's that's what happens. Anyways, friends, I want to compare these two saws right now. This saw in the in the videos of me running it, it didn't seem to be oiling. Let's cut to a video for those of you that haven't seen. I'm cutting oak. This saw's not oiling. It seems to oil on the bench, but it's not oiling in the oak. Watch this. <laughs> can see that was I did that test on purpose uh, Caleb does a lot of hardwood removals uh, he's a tree man in Texas does a lot of hardwood removals and a lot of those trees are dead and old and just nasty he needs a, a good oiling saw as part of his day-to-day -day. so I did that test on purpose but what ended up happening was I ended up finding out that this oiler is, has an issue now here's the funny thing friends this saw oiled perfectly on the bench before I ran it so what I'm gonna do right now I have an OEM oil pump on this saw let's fire this saw up. I'll bring you guys in watch the oil coming out of it and let's see let's compare the two maybe this saw is not oiling anymore maybe we need to change an oiler or maybe there's another problem I suspect the second problem and not the oiler but I could be completely wrong Let's fire this saw up. I'll bring you guys in close so you can see the oil coming out of it at idle. Or not at idle, because of course these don't these don't oil at idle. But so you guys can see the oil coming out of it when I blip the throttle. Let's have a look. And then we'll run this saw. Okay, I got you guys in close here. I'm just gonna fire this up. This is the stock 288. Make sure there's fuel in this thing. Is there any fuel in it? Yep, we're good. Interesting. This saw may need a tune, friends. Hold on. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to say it needs a tune 100%. Give me a second here. You guys are going to laugh at me. I looked in the tank of this, and it had fuel in it, but it really didn't have any. <laughs> what I saw in there was about this much fuel. There I am tuning it, and I'm like, oh, we got another farmer tech issue. Funny how we assume, right? Oh yeah, it's gotta be it's gotta be these farmer techs. No, 
There's no fuel in it. It was a tin mount issue. Okay, I'm gonna fire this thing back up. I'm gonna bring you guys back in. Let's see how much oil comes out of this thing versus, I'll bring you guys in here. All right, you're looking right there, friends. I'll just blip the throttle, I'll get it started. How much oil comes out of this thing? This is a good running saw. I think I have it a little rich right now. Let's put the high idle on. Watch this. Okay, take the cap off. I bet you this thing's gonna oil now. This is an unintended thing. Okay, fire this thing back up. second time and not the first time. Okay, let's fire up the ported saw. I think I know what the problem is with both of these saws, friends. I really do. I'm pretty sure, but let's fire up the ported saw now. I'm just going to put this one on the ground. Make sure you guys are in close enough. There we go. Yeah, you guys can see. Okay, ported saw. Okay, sorry, I have to tune this a little bit, friends. I wanted to uh, make sure it's gonna do its thing. It was a lot colder last time I ran this saw. that kill switch it died already I know this this thing sounds good doesn't it <laughs> like crazy so the question is friends and I know I often get a uh, I often get messages about it's hard I'm just gonna move you guys up here it's hard to know how strong a ported saw is you should run it against a stock one here friends right here stock 288 ported one listen to how quicker or how much quicker this thing ramps up okay that's what I was going for on this bill Torque, uh, torque, RPM, I added a little bit of RPM to this build, but airflow, remember us talking about that lightweight piston in that saw, how it would change directions quicker and just really light up? Look at the difference. Now, friends, that pipe on this saw is breathing quite nicely. It's hollow. Um, it, it's a good running saw, but just listen to the difference between these two saws. flooded it when I killed it with the choke.
Okay, can you guys hear and see the difference? I can feel the difference. When I touch the trigger on this saw, it absolutely lights up right now. So, getting back to the reason why I made this video. Why is this saw not oiling? Well, it occurred to me the other day and it, I actually got a message from one of you out there. I'm sorry, I can't remember who sent it to me. But one of you guys said your 288, the oiler hole, is slightly different than a stock one. And when you use a still mount pattern bar, which is what I have on there, you guys, I'll show you guys that. Okay, I'll bring it over here. I use still bars on most of my saws um, for a couple of reasons. One, the still mount will fit on any saw I own, and two, still bar mounts are super common. But as you can see here, the oil hole's there. Well, apparently, apparently, you need to drill the oiler hole out on a still powdered bar on these 288s. So, I'm thinking right now, maybe I should put a Husqvarna pattern bar on this and let's go outside and see if it oils. If it doesn't, I could start digging into the oiler, you know, etc, etc. But if it does, well, then we got no more issues. And you guys look, this thing's dripping oil like crazy. So, I'd really like to get this thing sent out. Um, I got to replace the kill switch. I have tons of those. A um, couple of screws and fasteners. The idle screw on this saw is a little tight compared to the idle screw on this saw. I think I'm going to swap parts for Caleb. And that's about it. Oh, there's one more thing I want to do, friends. I want to modify the trigger mechanism on this saw. When you, when you deck these saws and... Uh, when you, when not deck them, but even when you do a base gasket delete on a 288, and that's all I did to this saw, I didn't do any machine work. Um, contrary to popular belief, friends, you don't need to do a bunch of machine work to make a saw boogie. Um, you guys have seen in the video of this running, this saw pulls a long bar with authority. It runs at good RPM, and it also, it also is super snappy. Well, I didn't do any machine work, friends. I think the combustion chamber in these 288s is the right size. And remember, I don't have a ton of intake timing in this saw. All I did was add a couple of degrees of intake timing, like four degrees of duration, and slapped it back together. The exhaust port is stock height. Giant, giant lower transfers in those. A lot of people were disagreeing with me about that, and, and that's okay. Um... You folks do it your way and I'll do it mine. Uh, this thing's perfect. It's it's the best 288 I've built to date. It's it's the right amount of torque, the right amount of RPM, and the right amount of giddy up. When I touch the trigger on this thing, it just lights up. Okay, enough flopping. I'll just throw a random bar on this and let's check for oil and just see. Will it oil now or do I still have an issue? I thought maybe I had a tank vent problem. This is the tank vent. It's a little, it's a little brass or copper piece that breathes and you just hammer it into the tank right here. It pushes right through. Um, I was going to change that today and I still might, but at the end of the day, this thing seems to be oiling. So maybe we have a bar uh, hole alignment issue. Let's put a Husky pattern bar on this and find out. I'm just listening if there's a shunk. Yeah, a little bit. It went pop when I pulled the cap. Okay, if this tank vent's not working and I just took this cap off, it should oil now for a little bit. Let's find out. This is kind of what it was doing before. I'll just go through the test again.
Okay, we're back on the bench. Um, I don't know, friends. This thing was oiling. It was slinging a little bit of oil at the beginning. I could see some oil on the chain. And then it's like it just stops oiling. I thought perhaps I had a, an oil vent issue. And I'll show you guys where the tank vent is on these. And I'll show you guys how to get them out. But honestly, friends, if this thing was oiling, I'd have oil in here. I just took the bar and chain off. There's no oil in here. Look how dry that is. If it was just not going into the hole, often it'll leak out and it'll leak down and it'll be all over the clutch. I really don't have any oil coming through this thing. So, um, and again, I guess we could fire it up one more time. like crazy now oiling like crazy so the question is what's the problem okay here's the problem friends and this is this is an issue with some of these aftermarket parts and the problem is okay you guys see that tank vent right there here's an oem one i have one okay the tank vent in this saw is substantially bigger so I can't even drive it out and put an OEM one in because this one's not to OEM spec. So I'm not sure what to say friends, but because I'm pulling the oil cap off and the saw is doing its thing, um, that tells me right away that I have a venting issue. Now, one thing I thought of, I don't know, I don't know how you guys feel about this. I'll bounce this idea off of you guys out there. What if I found a vented cap for Husqvarna that would fit in this thing? Or what if I drilled a hole in the cap and JB welded or epoxied the tank vent in? That would get rid of our issue, wouldn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to be in deep thought over this saw. Um... <laughs> I don't know what to say, friends. It's uh, it's just one of those things. We're having fun here, but sometimes some of these projects, you scratch your head. Uh, down one, or you solve one issue and create five more. Okay, I think I'm going to call it a video here because I'm kind of out of stand still. Um, oh, I see the tank vent venting right now. It's pushing tons of oil out. My guess is though, it doesn't allow air back in. I'm guessing it only goes one way. Yeah, I see it venting. So, um, I guess I could do a vac and pressure test of the oil tank. Um, rig up some kind of a plug and try that. But honestly, at this point, because... I'm pulling the, the oil cap off and putting it back on and then the saw vents. That tells me right there that I have to have some kind of a tank vent issue. Um, so a little bit of a head scratcher only because I don't, like I said, I'm looking at the OEM one right now and I'm looking at the FarmerTech one and the FarmerTech one looks substantially bigger. So um, kind of out of stand still. Anyhow, friends, I wanted to show you guys this, you know, sometimes projects end up being uh, a little bit of a headache. You guys know me, I like to show you what I'm doing on video, and this is what I'm doing. This saw runs incredible, but it definitely has its fair share of nagging little issues. And again, this is a work saw. I can't send it until it's perfect, so um, I'm going to keep on keeping on and figure out what I'm going to do with this saw, but... In the meantime, if you guys don't see this thing for a little bit, it's because I'm puttering with it in my spare time off camera. And if I figure out a fix for that tank vent, I'll definitely let you guys know. Um, it's definitely not venting. And it can't be clogged, friends. It's brand new. So that tank is shiny inside. This thing's never been in the wood more than what you guys have seen on film. I, every cut made with this saw has been made on film, so... Uh, kind of at a standstill. Anyhow, the trials and tribulations of building saws from junk parts and aftermarket parts. You guys know the deal.
Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later. It's time for question of the day. This one wasn't really a question, but Steve K sent me an email. How's it going, Steve? Thanks for the email. And he was posting, he posted in his email all these uh, timing numbers and some some issues he's having with his 660 build, big bore build. Uh, he's using an aftermarket cylinder. Um, he mentioned that without a base gasket, his intake timing is 101 degrees before top dead center and 101 degrees after. That's 202 degrees that the intake port is open. Wow. That's probably the longest intake timing I've ever seen. Um, and the other thing is he's free porting on the exhaust and that's when the piston skirt goes too far up and it uncovers the bottom of the exhaust port. That's called free porting. He's free porting eight degrees before top dead center and eight degrees after. That is 16 degrees of free porting. Whew, that's, that's a lot. Um, so if you guys ran into this problem, what would you do? Well, raise the cylinder, right? Your intake timing's too long. You want to raise the bottom of the intake because your intake timing is way too long. You also want to raise the bottom of the exhaust part. So perfect. Here's the problem though. With a base gasket, he's already at 48 foul squish and he's still free porting and his intake is way too long still. So in this case, Honestly, unless you can find a piston that's way taller on the top and way longer piston skirts, at this point, I probably wouldn't use that cylinder and piston kit. Um, your intake is, I guarantee that thing's going to spit back. You're way, way farther than where I would even head. You're 40, you know, you're 30 to 40 degrees longer intake timing and uh, 16 degrees of free port is quite a bit. Um, but hey, if you're in for to learn and grow, uh, maybe throw that thing together and see how it runs. And if you do, Steve, send me a video through email. I'd like to show everybody. Um, if it does run, cool. If it doesn't, if it's spitting back through the carb and loading up, uh, we'll know. Um, maybe it will run because you're free porting all that intake pressure as the as it pulls fuel and air into the bottom end will bleed out through the exhaust port because it's free porting. Who knows? But anyways, friends, if you see intake numbers that are way past 160, 165, etc., and you're free porting, you probably have a cylinder that is out of spec or you just don't want to use it. But that's just my, that's my answer to that question. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy and I'll see you guys in a couple days. Later.